Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Pendulum, but before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goose, you know what they are. And if you've done that, then welcome to Dunya, which is a fantastical fantasy kingdom that has lost its ruler! The Timeless King has disappeared! Where'd he go? Was it foul play? We don't know, but... In his absence, a power vacuum has opened up, and so nobles from all around the kingdom have stepped forward to try to take his place. And in this game, that's going to be our job. I am a drink here, the tyrant. I'm a big scary dragon who would like to take over uh, the place. And Jen, meanwhile, she is uh, Licinia, the alchemist. And... Oh boy, folks, this is a big game, and it's going to take me a little bit to walk you all the way through it, because... At its heart, this is a fairly simple worker placement game. At the beginning of the game, each of us have two workers, a commoner and a grande worker. We can send them around to various spots to do different actions. And we're basically trying to gather uh, four different types of resources, gold, culture, military, and votes, to be able to convert them into victory points in three different forms, power, Prestige, popularity, plus there's this extra special thing of completing a legendary achievement, I think it's called. And th these are our victory point markers. Over the course of the game, we are going to be trying to have all three of them climb. Because uh, we need the three Ps. Need to get more power, need to get more prestige, and more popularity so that we can become the ruler of the land. And we also have to impress everybody by doing an achievement. Now let's say at the end of the game, this is where I ended up. I got three of my four... Uh, victory points into the uh, parchment. If you can get all of them into the parchment, that means you are judged based on your total overall stats. How far did you make it in? But if you don't get them all into the parchment, then you are instead judged by whatever your worst attribute is. And so, it's really important to try to focus on everything. And, as a big scary dragon, I have some benefits. I already have a lot of power, which you can see why power is the shortest list that I have to climb up. But I have um, no, uh, what do you call it, uh, popularity. I'm not very popular. Nor uh, do I have any prestige, uh, because again, I'm a scary dragon. So I've got to work harder than other players to be able to get those up. If you compare and contrast to Jen, as an alchemist, all of her tracks are a bit shorter than mine. Or actually, I think her gold might be, her uh, popularity might be the same length as mine. But, you know, not only do we have different targets for victory points we have to hit, we also have different production outputs as well. Everybody, no matter who you are, can always produce two gold. And, and any of these production columns can be upgraded. But I can also produce five culture, four military, or three votes. Jen, meanwhile... Her situation is a little bit more interesting. Let's look at her a bit more closely. She can produce two gold, or five of any type of resource, four of any type of resource, or one power. So, Jen is in a very different situation than I am, both in terms of what she needs to do, what she can produce, and also what special cards we've got. As part of setup, depending on which character you are, you get four unique cards. Mine are about converting my... Um, what do you call this? The, my culture into other types of resources or into prestige, doubling up on completing objectives, and using votes to get more followers. Uh, each of us starts with two followers, the commoner and the grande, but we can get two more commoners over the course of the game. Oops, knocked everything around there. Oh, um, that's me. Jen's special powers are all about spending resources. Spend any eight resources to hire a new worker. As opposed to me, I need three votes. Um, although you can't, um, any of the basics, any any three, eight cubes to get a worker. Spend two cubes to retrieve a discarded card, which is very nice. Spend two cubes to get two points of any of the three types. Spend two cubes to recall one of your workers. So Jen is in a very different circumstance than me. Although I should say, that is because I am playing the advanced versions. These characters are on their advanced sides, and they're only for experienced players. Now, if you're new to the game, it's the rules strongly recommend, and I I strongly suggest as well that you don't start with these because if I were to flip this card over to the other side, well, I would have a standard set of productions and I would start with a standard set of much simpler cards. Get a prestige, get one cube, recall one character, or spend, uh, you know, in my case, three votes, but other players have different things to spend to get more workers. So the game has an 
early, an easier intro, but I'm dumping us right into the deep end of the pool with two very complex characters with lots of special, very asymmetric powers. Uh, also, not for nothing, we start with different resources. I've got two gold and two votes, which is good because I need votes to recover my spent cards. If I discard cards, I can't get them back until I spend four votes. Jen, meanwhile, she starts with three gold, one culture, one military, no votes, and for her to get back her spent cards, she needs to spend five culture. So again, I know there's a lot of stuff thrown at you. Suffice to say, we are both playing the same game, but we have very different ways of going about getting stuff done. And the game comes with several other characters as well. All of them radically different. Okay, so we've got our starting setup. We've set up the board as well. There are four randomly drawn kingdoms waiting to be conquered by us uh, to increase our production. There are one, two, three, four, five council cards that have been drawn randomly from the deck that will give us cool special powers during the council phase. And there is one objective. We are trying to seek divine favor, which is to say, if during the round we can get eight culture and three votes, then that means we can claim divine favor and immediately conquer one bit of terrain for free. Because the interesting thing is, we just have to have these resources. We don't have to spend them. If we show we've got it, we get a uh, conquering for free, which is great because normally you have to spend military points to be able to conquer terrain. Phew, that's a lot going on. But we're not done yet, folks, because there's one more thing to talk about. I, uh, as part of setup, well, first of all, as part of setup in a two-player game, which is what I'm playing today, four dummy workers have been placed here in this zone, this zone, this zone, and this zone to kind of tighten the board up a little bit. They never do anything. They just sit there, never moving. They just make it. They, it's like they replicate another player who has already claimed some spaces. Um, but now... We, in player order, have to deploy our workers so that we'll be able to do our first action before the game begins. I am the first player because I'm at the top of this little royalty track. I forget the name of it. I should look it up. Anyway, I'm, I'm at the top. Jen's at the second. The dummy player, well, again, he never does anything, but it's possible because the dummy player always has three votes. If the dummy player has more votes than us, the dummy player will make it to the top of the charts in the second after the council is over. But otherwise, they just kind of occupy space in the race for... Uh, royal standing. Okay, so I uh, first I'm going to place my grande worker, and then Jen is going to place her grande worker. Then I will place my common worker, and Jen will place her common worker, and then the game can begin. Okay, so where am I going to go? Well, there are some restrictions. First of all, you may have been wondering, what's with these sand timers? What's going on with that? These are a big part of the game because, folks, I buried the lead. This is not only a real, this is not only a worker placement game, it is a real-time worker placement game. And these track the passage of time. Uh, they uh, make certain areas of the board available or cut certain areas of the boards off depending on how long they take to, to um, you know, have the sands fall through the hourglass. Now here's the thing. You might already be saying, nope, out, done, don't care. But here's the deal, folks. Uh, Stonemeyer Games has you covered. It is an option to play real time, but instead, if you want, you can use this timer track and play in a traditional turn-based fashion. That This emulates the passage of time. This is the fastest one. This hourglass counts down every 45 seconds, which is why almost every single round you flip the hourglass, which it represents time having passed. Every once in a while you flip this one because it, it counts down every two minutes. This one, the, the purple one, which has the most powerful action, it only goes twice in a round because it's every three minutes. So you can see that at a glance, we are emulating the passage of time by simply having this move as we flip and flip and flip and flip. And when we flip, we don't care about the actual time. Players can take as much time as they want while still maintaining the structure. So, and what I mean, what does the structure mean? Well, when an hourglass is in an area, this hourglass is occupying these four spaces. You can see it's adjacent here. That means any workers that are in this area can start doing their work. But no other worker can be placed because it's cut off. This is the active area. Nobody can take their workers out of here or place new workers. Instead, while the hourglass is here, down here, there's a whole new area where anybody could go. So, you know, Jen and I could both be placing our workers down here because eventually, after 45 seconds have passed or after we have moved to another round, this will flip starting another timer if you're playing in real time and now all of these people can do their actions 
but they're stuck here. They can't do anything else. And anybody who, you know, if there had been somebody here, this guy was stuck. And then when I flip this over, these guys start working. And now this guy or girl, this worker, is free to go somewhere else. And that is the crux by which we are limited by time or by the approximation of time if we do the, the turn-based game. And today, folks, I'm going to show you how the turn-based game works because I am playing with these very complex characters. And it's going to be a lot to keep everything they can do in mind. So I'm going to do turn-based. But as I'm going, I'll, I'll, I'll remind you what it feels like for the real time. But if you are, if you want to know about the real time, you're in luck. You can hit that eye up in the top right corner of the screen and go to the extended playthrough where I will play this real time using the solo rules because this is a solo game. Um, although if you want to play solo, you must play real time. The turn-based doesn't work under those circumstances. So um, I would still suggest watching this first because I'm going to explain how all the systems work, how you gather resources, how you complete objectives. And when I get to the extended playthrough, I'm going to assume you've seen this video. You know how it works. I'm just going to show you how it works in real time. So anyway, all of that out of the way, as part of setup, I get to place my Grande someplace. But I cannot place him here because these areas are blocked off by this one. These areas are blocked off by this. And these areas are blocked off by this. So that means I can place my Grande in any of these four, either of these two, or these two areas. And where do I want to go? Well, remember I was talking about me and how I need votes. Most characters don't need votes to recall their hand of cards so you can play cards more often. Never mind the fact that, hey, I need votes to recruit more followers. So I want to get into a position where I can get votes. There's two ways, there's a few ways I can get votes. One, if I do a brown production, which is the slowest one, I'll generate three votes, three of the four that I need for this action or this action. Also, these actions down here are very quick. They're only 45 seconds. If I just come down here, I can get a single vote. So I can get votes that way. If I come to this area or this area when it's not locked down, I could get two votes. But also, remember I was talking about how I can conquer terrain if I look at this, if I conquer Ming Tal, this allows me to upgrade and get votes out of either of these actions. That is very interesting as well. Hmm. It actually, yeah, it lets me upgrade any votes. So, conquering this terrain will allow me to generate votes faster for the rest of the game, which means. I want to conquer this terrain as fast as I can, hopefully before Jen does. Because if Jen conquers it, there goes all my chances to upgrade my production to get votes for free. So I think what I want to do right out of the gate is earn the four military points that I need to be able to conquer one of these regions. So how do I get military points? Well, um, the main way would be for me to do red production. Because you can see, I can do gold, purple, red, or brown production. They give me different things. If I do red production, I'll get the four military I need to be able to conquer this terrain and upgrade my vote making machine. So that's what I want to do. So I want to get that, I want to generate red. How do I do that? Well, if we look up here, this space says, um, so if we zoom in a little bit closer, you can see it says, hey, do a red generation. Red generation for Gen means make four resources. For me, it means specifically make four military. So Jen has a little bit more flexibility if she does a red. So I want to activate this. Now there's this one up here as well. I can't get to this one because it's blocked off. All of these are off limits to me. So I'm going to put my grande here, which means later on when I get to activate this grande, I'm going to want to spend two gold to do a red production. And that means I will generate the military I need to conquer. All right. So that was my first worker placement. Jen now gets to place her grande. And what does she want to do? Let's see. Well, Jen just needs a lot. Uh, if Jen can get eight of any resource, she can hire another worker. You can see we've got two more workers that we could hire. So Jen would like to chase after that. But what else? I mean, there are definitely other things to chase after. Main thing we have to chase after is points. Don't forget, if we don't get, if we do everything except get points, we're not going to win. So maybe Jen just wants to go grab some points really quick. Yeah, you know what? I think Jen, she's going to put her grande here. Now, this is an interesting thing that's going on. Remember, these white ones, or you could use any other non-use player color. These represent dummies who are just never going to move. This is a common worker. Co um, you can. I mean, we have common workers as well. There's a restriction. A common worker can never go to an occupied space. 
So Jen can't send her common worker there because there's already one there. Jen can't send her common worker over here because I put my grande. But if I had put my common worker here, again, a common worker cannot go to an occupied area. So they're very, very difficult to get where they need to go. So, um, but grande workers can always go where they want to go. There's no restriction on them. So Jen would not be able to send her commoner here because there's already one there. Um, or it's already used, but Jen is going to send her grande there because that means she's going to spend two gold to get a point, to get some power, which is the whole point of the game, and to get two votes because Jen can see I start with two votes. And if we make it through all of these rounds and go into the council, whoever has the most votes gets a huge benefit. So Jen wants to make sure she has more votes than me before we get to the council. So coming here, not only does it get her a point, which is the whole point of the game, but it gets her two votes. And she can go here with her grande. Now, if there were other players, they would put their grandes out. Now we're going to put out our commoners. I put my commoner out first. And I'm going to put my commoner over here. Because remember, I'm ha planning on having my grande generate the military strength I need to conquer, and then my commoner will actually spend that military strength to do the conquer action. And so, Jen says, hey, you know what? Jen's going to spend all of her gold to do this action. Jen says, I'm just going to come over here and get some more gold. Uh, because you can never have too much gold. Gold makes everything. You need gold for all of these actions. All these actions require gold, or you can't do them. These military actions require military strength. The conquering, all of these don't require anything. And there's one other important thing about all these things down here that I should mention. And that is, you will notice, in these spaces, it shows big and small, there are no restrictions. Commoners are not blocked out of zones down here. Even, if, you know, even though I'd already put something here, normally Jen wouldn't be able to go there because it's already occupied. But in these uh, areas, the fast ones, it, commoners can always get wherever they want to go. So Jen could try for this too. She doesn't have the military. Jen is just going to make herself some gold when, um, when we start going. Phew. Okay. So, setup is now done. We've got our special powers, our special targets, our special production, um, our starting resources, and our workers have been placed. So far, everything we've done, we would have done this if we were playing the real-time game or the turn-based game. But now, it is time to decide whether it's turn-based or not. And we're doing turn-based. So, this represents... This little gray thing represents the true passage of time. Instead of a, p paying attention to the sand timers and you know how, how sand is passing, we're going to pay attention to this as we go round, oops, excuse me, round after round after round after round. So I'm putting it here and the game is afoot. And it says when we get here, flip all three sand timers, which is the way we start the game normally. We start a 45 second countdown, a two minute countdown, and a three-minute countdown. And something else happened here. You will notice, as part of setup, we put these little purple timers. These represent the total passage of time before our council. Once these three purples have been gobbled up, then we go to the council phase, which you'll see in a while. So, normally, if we were playing the real-time game, at this point, we would both be ah! frantically trying to activate our characters and do stuff, the stuff we had already planned. Because now that this hourglass is here, I can activate my grande. Jen can activate her grande. Now that this hourglass is here, we can activate our commoners. But it doesn't matter since I'm not playing real time. Oh, look, I'm almost out of time. This is almost completely emptied. It's about to... And if I were playing the real time game, once it empties and somebody notices, you go on ahead and you put it back over here. But in the turn based game, we don't care about the sand. We just care about the locations. It said move them or flip them. And so I did. And now we can start doing our actions. And the thing is, even though this is a, uh, you know, a round based system, it's still real time in that players can do whatever they want in any order. We, I, Jen doesn't have to wait for me to go and then she goes and then I go and then she goes. We can just start going. So. I'm going to do all of my stuff, then I'll do all of Jen's stuff, but in the reality, we would be doing these things at the same time. I am going to activate my Grande, spend the two gold I started with to trigger my military production, which gives me four military. 
And this Grande is done. He cannot do anything else until this Hourglass eventually comes back over here. Once it comes back over here, hooray, he's free and he can go do action. So I have, in theory, tied him up for two real world minutes. I can't get him back out. Now, in the reality, it's not real world minutes. It's going to be until we do one, two, three rounds. Three rounds from now, I'll be able to get him out. Because again, that's replicating the passage of time, but in round turn, in turn based. Okay. So I've done that, and now I'm going to activate this little guy, and I'm going to spend that four military and conquer this terrain. Dee -doo 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 -doo. It's Ming Ta, and I am going to install this in real time um, in one of these things. And so I can give myself three votes if I install this in my purple production column, or I can give myself. Um, one power, which is a victory point every time I do brown production, or I can give myself two votes every time I do red production, so I'd be making military and votes, or I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my fast production. Every time I do golden production, I make two gold, like all players do, plus I also generate one vote. And strictly speaking, I can do this almost every single round. In real time, I could do this every 45 seconds. So that's it. My two workers, I set them up and they're active. And now there's nothing more I can do with them because they're stuck. Now, um, I, you know, until 45 seconds have passed and I can move this back over here, I can't use him. Until two minutes have passed, I can't use him. But in, in this case, we're doing it real time. So um, although I can also do other things. In addition to my workers who are now locked in, they can't get out. And if I had more workers, I could be placing them in other areas to get ready, but I cannot place them in these areas that are now locked out. Now, it doesn't matter. I don't have any workers. I could start playing my cards, though, but I don't have any culture, so I can't play those. I don't have four votes, so I can't play this, and I'm not doing achievements, so I can't do that. So I think I'm done. I, I'm done everything I want to do this round. And um, while I was doing my stuff, Jen was doing her stuff. Jen started with two gold. She activated this, which gave her one victory point, one power, and two votes. And now we are all tied up in the votes race, which is the way Jen wants it. And Jen is going to activate this guy and do gold in production, which gives her two gold. And here's the thing. You can activate these people in any order you want. Let's say, for whatever reason, Jen didn't have two gold right now. She could activate him first get the two gold, and then activate him, spending the two gold to, you know, get the power and the points. Now, as it is, she had the gold, so that didn't matter. But often, you'll be in situations where, hey, I've got my person, they're in place, they're ready to go. The, the, the hourglass has shown up here, but I don't have the money. So you have to have some other worker come down here and make the money really quick while time is passing. But as it is, these two have worked, Jen is done. But you know what? Jen's not done. Jen, I think, she's going to play one of her cards. Yeah. She's going to play this card. It's a very interesting one. This says she can spend any two of her cubes. And remember, she has two gold, one culture, and one uh, military. She could spend any combination of these two to recall one of her workers. Because remember I said, normally, the workers who are in these areas where the hourglasses are, they're stuck, they're trapped, they can't do anything. Jen's going to break that rule. She's going to play this, and she will give up her military and her culture to do it. And now that means she could break free her commoner or her grande. She says, grande, come with me. And so he is now broken free. Because remember, he was going to be stuck here for two real time minutes or one, two, three more rounds. Jen just broke him out early using this power by spending resources. And now Jen can place him. And she's going to place him. Uh... You know what? Jen's just going to place him up here and just make some more money because you can never have enough money. Okay, so Jen is done. I'm done. I used my workers. I didn't play any of my cards. Jen's used her workers and she played one of her cards to get another use out of her workers. She's very happy about that. And so everybody says they're done. And only when everybody says they're done does time tick forward. And now we move on to it says flip this. Boom. And now 45 seconds to begin. But again, we're playing round base, so we do not care that time, or the, the sand doesn't matter. What matters is this grande can now activate and give Jen mo money. And meanwhile, these two are free! We're free! We can go do something else now. And again, we can resolve this in real time, however we wanted. So, what do I want to do? Oh, and by the way, 
You're not required to, but every time you conquer a terrain, you can go on ahead and draw a new one. There's always four available. If you're thinking about conquering, you probably want to draw. In the real-time game, players often forget, oh, i got to put another one out. Also, when you're conquering, you can take any of these, or you could draw blind if you don't like what you see. But anyway, so um, we can both go ahead and do some more work. And I want more votes. Now, okay, so here's what I'm going to do. My little guy who was over here on Warfare, I'm going to pick him up and I'm going to send him over here because he is now going to generate gold for me and votes. He's going to start working on getting me my votes I need to be able, well, to be able to get divine favor, to recall my cards, or, and or, to give myself another worker. All right. And that's it. I don't have any more workers at this point. My other worker is locked up and I can't break him out of jail the way Jen did. Um, but so Jen's got this guy. Jen, now, remember I said uh, these areas are all fine. Jen could just give herself some more gold if she wants. But she's already got four gold. What does she want to do? What does she want to do? Um, you know what? I think, I think Jen will send this guy up here. All righty. It's an open area. Nobody's here. It, you know, it, it's, it's not locked out because if the, remember, if this were up here, she couldn't come into this area. But it's down here, so Jen can come up here. And so it's a common, but and there's nobody else here. Jen has blocked this area off from any other commons. Jen is planning on either spending two gold to get another power point plus two more votes so she can really lock in the vote lead or to give herself some popularity. She'll wait and see. She doesn't have to decide right now. She's given herself access to these two things and she can't be blocked out of them now. Although here's the interesting thing. Say I really wanted to go there, and um, you know I, you know, and, and both Jen and I in the real time portion say we both want to go there at the same time. How do we resolve that? We check over here. Whoever is top dog gets it. So in this case, if we both wanted it, I'd be the one who actually goes there because I'm higher than Jen on the favor track at the moment. Now, as it happens, it doesn't matter because I wanted to start making votes and money. Jen's already got money. She wants to convert it into other stuff. So that's it. We are our workers are have either been deployed to our liking or they are trapped, in which case they can't do anything. We could still play more cards, but I don't have any culture, so I'm not doing it. Jen could, this is interesting. Oh, this is really interesting. If Jen wanted, she could spend two to use this. This would let her recall another card. Then she could play her other two to break her grande out again and deploy him a second time. That's a really nice combo. But then she'd have no gold. To, so I don't think it makes sense. Yeah, she doesn't have to do that. But, you know, that's an example of kind of you can start imagining how you can start getting... And, and over the course of the game, this is a deck builder. You will be able to get more cards and add them to your hand. So Jen could do that, but she's not going to do that. All right, so I think we're done. We both Everybody declares they're done. And so time moves forward, and it says, flip. Okay, and so now Jen's Grande is free. So she just had to wait a little bit. She didn't have to do all that to get him. We'll deploy him in a second. Meanwhile, my guy says, hey, give me two gold and a vote. Yeehaw. Okay, so there we go. So I'm pretty much done. This guy is still stuck. Remember, I knew when I put him here, he was going to be stuck for a while. So that guy's done. I still don't have enough to play a card. If I get one more vote, then yeah, okay. So I think I'm done. I declare I'm done. I'm not playing any of my cards. Jen says... Hey, I've got Mr. Grande. Where's he going to go? Uh, Mr. Ariana Grande. You know what? Oh, this is interesting. Yeah, let's do it. Jen's just going to put all her workers in one basket. Uh, because by default, there's no restriction. You can send multiple workers to the same space. Now, if Jen had sent her Grande first, she would not then be able to follow up with the common. But because the commoner got in there, Jen could follow up with the Grande. And now, Jen will be able to do um, the you know either of these twice or both of them once. So that's pretty cool because Jen's got the money she needs. So, and, and here's the thing. We can see, you could either physically see that the hourglass is about to flip or you could see we're about to get there because of the passage of rounds. All right, so that's done. Jen's not going to use any of her cards, so we're done. We move on and instead of flipping this one, we're flipping this one. And suddenly, my grande is free! He's free to go do something. We'll come back to him in a second because meanwhile, Jen says she's going to spend all four of her gold to get two more votes and another power point. And what the heck, she'll split it up. Spend two gold and get two popularity. She's gotten two power, two popularity, and she's gotten four votes now. So now, because I have three, and once again, Jen is in the lead with four. Jen wants to make sure she wins, because when we get to the council, when all the time has passed, that's when whoever has the most votes gets to climb to the top of this and get all kinds of benefits. 
including the tiebreaker if, if multiple players want to do the same action at the same time. So Jen wants that, so she's keeping her eyes on the prize. She could just get more votes, but, I mean, she would like to... She figures that'll be enough. All right, so that was that. These guys are now trapped, stuck in place. This guy's still waiting, which will ha this guy will come free next round. But in the meantime, what's Mr. Grande going to do? Let's do it one more time. Let's just keep on running this into the ground because I'm going to get my fourth vote. Which means, yeah, okay, I'm gonna happy with that. All right, so there we go. Everybody says they're done. I'm not playing any of my cards. Jen's, or Jen can't play any of her cards because she has no resources. <laughs> done. Let's move on. And it's like 45 seconds just passed. And boom. This guy comes free. And this guy says, hi, I'd like to get two gold and a vote, please. And boom, I've got four votes. My target has been achieved. And here's the thing. Jen doesn't get to do anything. Because you ever heard the uh, phrase, don't put all your eggs in one basket? Jen put both of her works in one basket. That was a very big turn. She got a lot of points. She locked in the vote. But she's now locked both of her characters down. She won't be able to get them for a few rounds. Ah. All right, well, that's going to be kind of painful. But, you know, that's the kind of choice you can make in a real-time game. All righty, so we'll see how that plays out for her. I was just kind of excited. I had the goal up here. What the heck? Let's, I, mean, I really just wanted to demonstrate that, uh, you know, Jen could put multiples... That might not have been the wisest move. We'll see how it plays out. So anyway, so I made some money and some votes. I get a new guy. Let's come back to him in a second. I, I can deploy him someplace else. But I'm going to play my first card. I'm going to play this one that says, spend four votes and get another worker. Hello. Now I've got two guys to deploy, and I've lost all my votes. And that's kind of a problem. Because I cannot get this card back until I get four votes on hand. Jen can get her cards back using the power of other cards or by collecting five culture, which she hasn't done yet. Me, I got to work a little bit harder. And I just threw all those votes away. And Jen's like, yes! Now she's kind of regretting she picked up all those votes. If she had seen me do that, she might have said, oh, I don't need these votes. And she might have gone this way instead and gotten even higher. Um, but, eh, we'll see how it works out. We'll see how it works out. All right, because Jen has no... Yeah, she doesn't have a... No, no, there's there's one. Thing. Remember, even if Jen didn't need to have all four votes because I have no votes and that means she's going to win over here, there's also the question of earning divine favor. You need to have three votes on hand so Jen could start trying to work on that now. Okay, so that was it. Except we haven't moved on to the next round yet because I've still got two guys to deploy. And I'm going to deploy one of them over here. Because here's the thing. If you're paying attention, you will notice that... Oh. All right, well, this is actually a problem I've noticed with my pre-production copy of the game. Some, when you put these down, you've got to put them down hard because sometimes the sand does get stuck in my version of the game. Uh, I guess I'll talk more about that in Final Thoughts, but I don't know if that's an issue with the pre-production copies or what. But Jen and I have found, and I, I just forgot to do it, you know, that we just kind of go like that when we put it down, and, that, and I can see the sand is... Anyway, so, but anyway, either I could have noticed that three minutes have almost passed, and so this guy will get to get activated very soon. But I can see right here, since I'm playing turn-based, by putting this guy here, I'm going to get to activate him. And so where do I want to put him? I can't put him here because once I put one commoner, I cannot put another. So let's just put him down here and keep on starting to start to regenerate votes once more. Yeah, all right. So that's it. I'm not playing any more cards. Jen is not playing cards. So we move on again. And this flips. And this flips. Boom. So... This guy is free! And Jen's still stuck up here because she put everything, all her eggs in one basket. This guy can go, which gives me two gold. And I'm starting to rebuild my votes. And this guy, I have two choices up here. Let's see, which one do I want to do? I can spend two bucks to do my purple production, or I can spend two bucks to get another vote, which I love, and get one... Um, uh, Popularity, which is a victory point, and one prestige. So I could get two victory points and a vote. Or I could activate purple. And if I activate purple, I get five culture. I think I want that culture, yo. Because I need culture for two of my cards. So I'm going to spend two gold to activate this, which says right here, five culture. One, two, three, four, five. Yay. And now here's the interesting thing. If I had put this over here, I would also be getting two votes right now, but instead I put it on my more common thing. So anyway, he's done, and now he is stuck there for three minutes. Or basically until the end of the round. We're going to go through what? One, two, three, four, five, six more rounds before I can get that guy back. It's a good thing I hired another one because he I'm not going to see him for a while. Unless, of course, I had a power that would let me pull him out like how you saw Jen do. Okay, 
<clears throat> and I'm done. This guy activated, this guy activated, but hey, Mr. Grande. What am I gonna do with Mr. Grande? Hmm. I can see green is about to come. Here's the thing, if I put Mr. Grande here to give myself some more money and votes, that means he'll be stuck and I won't be able to put him up here or up here, because in two rounds, he could activate these, which would let me get more military. Oh, that is interesting. So do I wait a little bit to get a big burst of military so I can recruit something else? Or do I just get some more money in votes? Hmm, you know what? Here's the thing. So I've got five um, culture now, which first of all, before I decide what I'm gonna do with him, because in addition to being able to place workers in the real-time portion, I can play cards. I'm gonna play my card, which means I'm gonna spend one culture to get any three cubes I want. I'm gonna turn one culture into three culture. Boom, boom, boom. Now I've got uh, one, two, three, four, I've got seven. If I get one more culture and two more votes, I can complete Divine Favor, which will give me a bonus of one free conquer. So I wanna get two more culture. How will I do that? Well, an easy way, a slow way, but an easy way would be to come over here and say, hey, when this comes up, which it's about to do, I'll just get one more culture. But I'd rather get two gold and another vote. Let's just get this culture done. Let's just come over here. So that's it. I'm done. I say I'm done. I don't have any more workers that I could deploy because this guy's locked down. That guy's locked down. This guy I have just deployed. Jen, these guys are still stuck here. Oh, oh, I knew that would be a problem. <laughs> it's definitely, oh man. All right. So, um, and Jen still has no resources. She can't play any of her cards, so she is done again. So we move on. And boom. Have I? Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. All right. So uh, this guy comes over here. He gives me one culture. And so now I've got all the culture I need. This guy is free. And I need two votes right now. I will... Oh, oh, yes. I will come up here. Boom. Because it's a commoner, but there's nobody there, so I can go. No, I can't. I can't go there because it's blocked off. I want to go here because this would give me the last two votes I need. But I can't because there's already something here, so my commoner can't go there. He can't go there. So I can't get two votes that way. Let's just slow and steady it because I love my little single point generator. So I'm just going to put him right there. All right. Everybody done? No one's playing any cards? Let's go on ahead. Although, although... Man, this green is about to flip. I could get four military, which would let me conquer again. Ugh. Or I could get two points. I've got the gold. So should I put it down here just to keep... No, I, no, I don't want to have my guy get stuck for two minutes like Jen did. So I'm just going to put him here. Everybody's done. We move forward. And now this is the only flip. And Jen says, finally. Finally. Okay. And meanwhile, I'm not doing anything with my guys. This guy's waiting for a flip. This guy's stuck. This guy's stuck. Right. So Jen is free. It took her a while. I mean, that was a big boost she got. I mean, she got. she's definitely winning on points. But I think Jen needs to... Or she has no money. So right off the bat, she's going to start trying to get some more cash. And what else does she want to do? You know what? She's going to double down. She just wants cash money as fast as she can. If she gets this, then she can play both of these cards if she wants to. Plus... Being stuck like that for that long has really reiterated Jen would like to get one of her, uh, get a third worker like I have. I mean, that was so, such a lifesaver for me. The best way for Jen to do that, I mean, she needs eight total cubes. This would get her four cubes, say. And if she does either of these productions, that will get her five or four cubes. But neither of those productions are going to happen right now. I mean, she could come up here so she could say, hey, I'm going to come up here and do my red, and that will give me four cubes, but not for a while. If she's going to do that, she might as well come over here and do her... Well, no, her brown production will give her power. But if she comes over here, she can get five cubes. But this guy's going to be stuck here for three more rounds. So Jen shouldn't put him there for... Yeah, Jen's just going to try and get some a quick influx of cash because she's been offline for so long. And she can see she's still winning on votes. So that was it. Jen finally broke free, and she's once again going to bring everything back in one, in one basket. Maybe not the smartest move. And again... In the real-time game, you will make inefficient moves. Make no mistake. You will sometimes forget to place a worker, and then somebody else does a timer like, ah, I meant to put that there. But, I, you know, I mean, you just, you get so wrapped up in the moment, which you'll see if you watch my extended playthrough, I'm sure. But anyway, so Jen's just going to double down and get a bunch of money. Okay, so we're done with that. Flip. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. She should have put these here. 
Yeah, this is where. Sorry, she should have put these here, right? Because that was the other. So flipping, boom. My grande is free. This guy, was he already here? Oh man, I'm starting to lose. Folks, this is why you watch with the Klingon subtitles turned on. I think he wasn't. I think he was here and I bumped him. So all three of these guys are going to... No, no, he must have already been here. But then... Oh. No, I'm sure this was it. Right. Oh, no, then it was. I think it was. When Jim was this... This guy was free. I could have put him somewhere. Oh, I've totally lost track. Um, uh, well... Like I said, I was just saying, sometimes it's easy to lose track of stuff. We'll just say that uh, as of this, both of my guys are now free. I don't remember what I've done. But anyway, Jen gets to activate. She gets four gold. And she's going to get these guys back very quickly. She needs that gold to be able to do just about anything, though. Although she could use that gold to start triggering cards right now. But right now, she just has her eyes on the prize. Getting another worker before the round is up. Holding on to her lead. All right, anyway. And me, meanwhile, I need more votes. Okay, so if I hey if I just did this, I'd get two more votes I need and I'd get my guys free very quickly. Yeah, let's do that. So we're just both doubling down on the really fast actions. Okay, so I'm prepared. Jen just did this. We move up again. Time. Jen's guys are free. My guys get me one, two, three, four gold, two votes. And in the same way that you can play cards whenever you want, they're not tied to your workers, they're not tied to the hourglasses, completing the objective, you can also do it anytime you want. I declare, I have eight culture, I have three votes, I have completed the divine favor, and I get the reward of one free conquer. And, hmm, what to do? I would like to upgrade this again. Um, but, you know, all of these... If, if I upgrade it, I'll get I'll turn this from making two bucks into three bucks, three bucks, three bucks or three bucks. I'd rather do something else. I don't like any of these. Let's just draw a blind and see if I can get something better. Nice. Oh, I'm going to conquer on land. All righty. So because I sought and achieved divine favor. Remember, I don't have to spend these resources. I just had to show I had them. I conquered for free. And now I've made it that every time I do this action, I get um, two bucks, a vote, and one strength, which means I don't have to bother with these necessarily. Nice. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And so you guys are stuck. Jen, all right. Jen, this is interesting. Oh, yeah. Jen is going to come over here, because uh, her commoner can go there, no problem, and come over here. Okay, uh, because her grande can go wherever he wants. All right, so that was it. Is anybody playing any cards? You know what I am? I'm going to play this card that requires three culture. I don't need eight culture anymore. So I'm going to spend three of it to get two prestige, which is my toughest thing. So I just got some prestige. Hooray. And, um, oh, 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 I forgot. My other card. The special power of this is when I complete an achievement, I double the reward. So I get to, I, I played this when I got that a second ago. I get another reward. Hmm. So I get to conquer again. What am I going to conquer? Well, I, I, the default limit is two. I could put another upgrade to my golden um, option here, but it would get. I would have to. I would at the end of the council, I'd have to discard down to two. Although I see one of the council upgrades is that it increases my max, so I can have up to three. So I could take three and then get that council upgrade later. But no, no, no. I mean, this is good enough. I want to upgrade these other things. So my next fastest one is red production. Red production happens every two minutes. Purple and brown happen every three minutes. So what could I upgrade and get red? I could increase my military, increase my military. Ah, they're all very basic. So I'd go from generating four military to six military. Let's see if I just draw a blind what I get. Ooh, it's... <gasps> it's more votes. Oh, man. I am a vote-making machine now. I am very happy with that. Now, if I do red production, I get four military and two more votes. And remember, I need votes to be able to recall my cards. I need votes to win in the council as well. All right, so that was nice. Oh, I'm happy about that. Okay. So that was two very lucky blind draws. That was really cool. Okay. So that is what doing this did. These guys are locked up. Jen just placed. She's getting ready for the final round before the council. And um, this guy is, is locked up. Where's, oh, no, I only have three guys. So all my guys are locked up. Jen has two guys. She has deployed them appropriately. And no one's playing any more cards. So we go on to the last round. We um, And it says flip everything. Flip, flip, flip. 
And that's a uh, sea change. Jen gets her grande back. I get both of my guys back. I get all three of my workers are back. And Jen gets to activate... Wait, what? Oh, oh! I put this guy down here. I meant to put him up here because Jen, I had it backwards. I, I put him down here. That was wrong. I'm sure Paulo pointed out. I couldn't put him here. This is where this was. I put him up here. So I'm activating this guy. Jen is activating this guy. No, I'm... Oh. You know, it was this one. So she put here. That's what it was. That's what she wanted. So Jen's activating this guy. For oh, oh, shoot, shoot, shoot the boot, drat. Jen needs eight resources. If she activates this guy, she gets four. She'll have four, but she has to spend two to do it. Okay, so Jen had not put this guy over here. She had put this guy over here. Ah, uh, sorry, folks. Um, it's. And this is turn-based, and there's so much going on. Although I am playing for two complex characters. So when this came over, Jen says, boom, I get two more gold. And then she spent two more gold to activate this, which says, hey, get four of any cubes you want. Jen will just go on ahead and take four gold. And then she will spend all of that to get another worker. Finally. All right. And so that gets discarded. So now Jen's completely broke, and she can place him. Now, here's the thing. When we got here, it's time for the call council. <gasps> Shoot, I was forgetting, folks. When the purple had moved back here, we knocked that little guy out of the way. When the purple moved back here, we knocked that one out. As a reminder that once all three of these have been gone, um, that was the last flip. Everybody gets to finish what they're doing, but as it says right here in the real-time game, no more timer flipping. Just continue playing, placing workers, taking actions, claiming achievements, do, using your cards until everybody's done. And that's where we are right now. So Jen could deploy. She's got one to deploy. I've got three to deploy, but she did her card. So she's got this guy. Hmm. Oh. Jen says... Jen wants to come over here. Because she would very much like to do a purple production. Because that will give her five resources. Because she's broke right now. But here's the problem, folks. Remember, I at the same time say, I want to come here. And because I'm higher on the royalty track, Jen doesn't get in. Bummer. But Jen's winning on both, so she's not too terribly worried about that. Hmm. All right. So I'm setting myself up for that. And, oh. What else? What should I do with my guys then? I have no more cards. I've literally used all my cards, and I can't get them back until I get four votes. I need one vote right now. Right now. How do I not have one vote? I mean, I could put the guy here, but it doesn't matter because remember, we're, we're at the end of the round. All I can do is prepare for later. I can't do flips. Shoot. Okay, well, I'm going to send uh, my common and my grande there. So I'm going to get to do two big purple actions. That's going to be awesome. And why am I holding one of Jen's? Oh, right, because she couldn't go there. Jen says, hey, well, I'll come up here then. Unless I, again, decide to kick her out. Because if we both want to go to the same place, then Jen doesn't have a choice. And I will. I'm going to kick her out of there. I'm going to take advantage. Because here's the deal, folks. I'm about to lose it. Jen's got more votes than me. She's going to go to the top of the pile. So I'm just trying to take advantage and, you know, um, you know, using uh, my privilege before it's gone. So Jen, she could come over here to get um, a red production to get four resources. All right. Oh, sorry. Ah, I keep forgetting. I can't go here. This is the place. We both want to go here. Jen wanted to get four resources. I say, nope, I'm going there because I want to make warfare and votes. And so Jen can't come up here. She can't go down there. She can't go there. So she's got to do a fast action. She might as well make some money. Never a bad idea to make money. Okay. So, and is anybody playing any more cards? Jen has cards, but she doesn't have any resources, so she can't. So we are done. Everybody says they're done. Now, in the turn base, we, we, we say, okay, everybody's done. We call the council, whereupon this is our new procedure. First of all, we readjust turn order. Who's top banana? Jen has four. I have three. And here's the interesting thing. The dummy player has three. Remember, the dummy player is just set up to block so that he tightens the board. You can't send commoners there, 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 there. You, only have to, you can only send your grandes to those four spaces. Otherwise, they never do anything. The dummy player, who was in last place, has three votes. I have three votes. Jen has four votes. That means Jen is the new top dog, and I am at the bottom of the pile. Because here's the problem. Me and the dummy player are tied with three votes each. And in the case of a tie, whoever is lower gets to bump up. And ouch. 
So those three votes do nothing for me. Nothing for me. And here's the deal. After we rearrange this, they're gone. Poof. Disappear in the wind. Oh, that is painful. Painful. Jen is top banana. I am bottom banana. And now I can't even use... I got to start building up again to be able to get all my cards back. Ouch. Ouch. Okay. Don't worry about me. Everything's fine. Okay. And by the way, I should say, the council phase is not real time. Uh, in case that wasn't self-evident. Uh, you know, so if, if basically, the main game is going to run for about 10 minutes or so. And then you get to do a council. But in this case, because I was doing it turn-based, it went for a lot longer. And then we do a council. So we have reset and then discarded our votes. Now we gain rewards, which means we got to come back up here and look at these votes. Because Jen is top banana. Jen gets first dibs on any of these council cards. And I get third dibs, although the dummy player doesn't take one. It's really kind of surprising. There's no function where the dummy terror takes those. But Jen also gets two victory points. The dummy player doesn't care, but he's keeping me away from getting one victory point. I get, I get last dibs on cards, and I get no victory points. So first of all, Jen will take those points. What the heck? She'll just go on ahead and even things out. So now she's made one, two, three, four, five, six points. She is on her way. Me, I have made one point. No, I've made two points, but Jen has made six. All right, and now she gets first dibs on a card. She can take any of those. And you know what? Okay, so there's interesting things. This lightning bolt means it's an instant. She takes this, she gets to immediately conquer one bit of terrain to upgrade her engine. Like you saw me doing, which she hasn't done. She could take that, but no. Jen's going to take this. I want this one. This is a way to generate a vote for free whenever you want. And Jen knows I want it because she knows how badly I need those votes. Oh, ah, uh, so Jen grabbed that one. All right. And now the dummy player doesn't take one, if I recall correctly. And now I get one of the remaining ones. I could just conquer some more terrain. I could get this that just lets me make a coin whenever I want for free. I could use this. This lets me turn one of my little guys into another grande, so I'm not frozen out of areas as nice as quickly. And the thing is, this option of just get one point and this option, they're always there. Although the first player to take this flips it and then no one else can do it for that council. So I could do either of those, but I didn't really feel like I got frozen out too much. So do I want this that lets me turn my military in? Oh, yes. That was so painful. You know, you, Jen was able to recall her guys with, um, which one is it? With this card. She can spend anything and recall one of her guys. I would like this. It goes in my hand, and whenever I want, I can spend two military, which I can generate. Um, although, man, I'm only generating, but ah! Or, I did see this one. I could take this, and that means as an upgrade, I could have up to three. I would like to get another thing on my cheapest one. Yeah, I'm going to take this. So this is instantly in effect. From now on, I can have three in every column instead of two. May not be the best choice, but we'll see how it goes. So that's just a, basically a passive ability I have now for the rest of the game. Okay, so that was it for rewards. All right, and we're both pretty happy, although I would have rather had that but one. Now, we see, um, if, has anybody gone over their maximum? It's two. I, for me, it's three. Nobody's gone, so nobody has to discard any terrain they lose. And now we set up for the next round, which means we go through these little steps. The cards we didn't take, gone. And five new ones come out. One. A tahu, a three, a four, and a five. Okay. And um, the terrain, gone. If you're thinking about conquering it, too late. Out of the game, four new ones come out. One, tahu, three, four. Also, the objective. I thought you were going to finish it. Too late. Nobody can get divine favor now. Gone. Out of the game. And now our new divine favor target is... Engaging a trade pact, which means you need to have on hand three votes, four money, and four culture. And now something is different. Because in a two-player game, we're moving on to the second of four rounds. This is available, which means the first player to, um, to, do, to complete a trade pact could either take a prestige and a popularity point, or they could claim this. The, the only function this has is to move you, whoops, I haven't done this yet, to move across this. Because remember, if you can get all of your point markers into the parchment, then you are judged based on your sum total achievements. If you can't, if I got all of these in except for that, then I would be judged by my weakest one. So um, sooner or later, at some point in the game, everybody wants to win this. Because 
it's going to be hard to win the game if you didn't get this at some point. So it's a matter of getting this just to get it done or get some points. And, uh, oh, finally, the little timers come back on. Skippity, flippity, dippity. All right, and now at the end of the council, if we wanted... If we, if we have cards, we could play them. If we, ha if we were, hadn't placed our workers yet, because we were waiting to see how the cards worked out, somebody might want to place their workers now. But we already did that. And so, after the council is over, in a real-time game, flip all timers and keep going in real time. But in our game, flip this back up here. Which again says, flip all timers. Alrighty, the timers are ticking, and the game continues. And you can see why I wanted to get my guys up here, because boom, I get to do two big super powerful actions. Although, I might regret this, because now I've tied both of them up for two min for three minutes, or for six rounds. Anyway, so what do I want to do? I've got all the gold, so I'm going to spend one, two, three, four gold to... Um, to I love votes, so I'm going to get a point... And a point, and a vote, and I'm going to come down here and get five culture. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm just full of culture, which doesn't do me any good right now. But remember, several of my cards allow me to spend culture and convert it into other stuff. So that was it, and I'm going to, I made the same mistake Jen did. I'm not going to see those characters. I'm down to one worker now for a while. Speaking of who, hey, I'll spend two gold and have this guy get to work. Hey, generate um, warfare for me. One, two, three, four. And give me two more votes. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Hold on, folks. This guy didn't come here to give me five culture. No, 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 no. This guy also came over here to give me another point. Another point. Another vote. I've got four votes on hand. I will spend them and get all my cards back. Getting my cards back. Yes, sirree. Including my new card that allows me to make more... My, oh, oh, no. I was going to... Uh, all right. So, I've got my cards back. So, even though these two guys are locked up for a while, I'm going to start being able to play these cards. In fact, I could do it right now. I could play this card, give up one culture to give myself three cubes. Like, um... Ooh. Like uh, three cubes, I think I'll just get the money. So I'm I'm set for money for a while. So already, all right. So I played that, and what the heck? I'll play three more culture. One, two, three, and so just like that, all my culture is gone, and I get two points on my prestige. Hooray! All right, and so now I need. Oh, and now if I had four votes, I could get my four, my fourth worker. All right. Anyway, though, so that was that. Uh, I just I've used those cards. And uh, this guy's done his thing, and I'm pretty much done. And meanwhile, Jen says, oh, I'll just get some money with that guy. This guy says, I'm free. And um, this guy says, I'm free. And doesn't Jen have a third? Oh, yeah, and this guy's stuck. So Jen could start planning her next move. And you know what, folks? I think I'm going to stop right there, because that should give you a pretty good idea of the gameplay of Pendulum. At least if you're playing the round-based full version of the game. Although, there's um, actually variants to make the game even heavier, if you want. I'll talk about that in the final thoughts. Uh, speaking of which, you can hit that eye up in the top right corner of the screen to go to my extended playthrough where you'll see me play this in real time. Wish me luck. Or the final thoughts. Folks, hit that eye in the top right corner of the screen in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.